I guess I need clarity in a couple things. There's a certain rituals that I have that help me feel good with myself, help me feel that I can achieve and do anything that I want. And when I am in that state of mind, I feel like I said I can conquer anything. But there's two desires that I want, and I feel those desires that are achievable. The thing I guess that I want is, when I think about those two desires that make me feel good, one more than the other, how do I go by no, let's say, using my time no wisely on one thing when I can focus on the other? You're really gonna like this. <laughs> every desire that you hold, every desire that you've put into your vortex, is viable, possible, yes. active in the vortex. So you can choose anything that makes you feel good to focus upon. And in doing so, everything that you want is in the process of unfolding. You don't have to choose one or the other. Just choose something that feels good and let everything that you want come to be. Focus 100% on that. On anything that feels good. On anything that feels good. Here's another way of looking at it. We give this analogy often and you will hear it clearly. Let's say there are five things that are important to you, five desires. And three of them, you're not the least bit worried about. You're seeing them unfolding. You're expecting them to come. Two of them you really want, but you're more worried about them because they're slower to come. If you will focus upon any one of the three that feels good, then the two that you're worried about will come too. But if you focus on the one you're worried about, you'll mess up all five of them. Oh. And if we were standing in your physical shoes, we would choose the one that is easiest for us to get there. Because it doesn't matter why you're in the receptive mode, when you are, then you're getting good ideas about everything that you want and everything moves along. Something else that happens, they can all dovetail together. We want to tell you a story because we want you to realize how they can all come about. We were talking with a woman on the phone many years ago who was not hearing us. She wanted us to cast a magic spell so that her things could come about. And she was irritated that we weren't willing to do that. We wanted to teach her how it's her vibration that makes things come about. And so everything that she talked about, she was talking about them from such a negative point of view that there was no way that she could even get any movement on any of them. So we said, let's talk about blue glass. She didn't want to talk about blue glass. She thought it was stupid that we would want to talk about blue glass. But we insisted and we described blue glass, lots of different shades of blue, lots of different depths of blue. Some blue glass you can see through, some you can't and so forth. It was truly annoying to her. And then we talked about butterflies. She didn't want to talk about butterflies either, but we wanted to distract her from the problems that were so active in her vibration. So we described butterflies. We spent about a minute, a little more than a minute talking about butterflies. Again, she's annoyed. And then we said, let's talk about feathers. She didn't want to talk about feathers either, but we described feathers for a little over a minute. And then she hung up. She was not happy. She did not get our point. She did not enjoy the subject of blue glass or butterflies or feathers. And then Jerry and Esther, they were in California at the time, went to one of their favorite restaurants to have lunch in La Jolla. And on their way to the restaurant, they parked their car and they got out to walk to the restaurant. And Esther said, let's go in here. She just felt this very powerful compulsion to go into this shop which is not altogether unusual for Esther, but it was a very strong desire. And so Jerry followed her in and they went in and in and in, back, 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 deep into the shop. And they discovered a complete wall of blue glass, filling the floor with so many beautiful blue glass objects. Well, it didn't mean anything to Esther. She had not really been focusing on the conversation from her conscious mind and Jerry had not heard it at all. And so, the blue glass didn't mean that much, but there it was. And then they went to George's and they had lunch. And then they left the restaurant and they walked down to the cove in La Jolla. And as they were walking across this expanse of grass, a flurry of butterflies 
surrounded them so intense that they had to stop talking to keep from eating them <laughs> and Esther is still not making the association with what we had activated together Jerry didn't realize it either it was just a very powerful anomaly and then the butterflies cleared and a little boy came from across the way and Jerry said to Esther do you know him it looks like he knows you and he came running to Esther and handed her a feather a pigeon's feather that he'd picked up off the ground and then Esther remembered the conversation about the blue glass and the butterflies and the feathers and she said to Jerry all of them have come about in nearly the same moment in time because they were all active in our vibration in other words all you have to do is find something that you haven't been beating a negative drum about and you will gradually soar to this place of connection and then everything that you want comes to you in perfect timing sometimes many of them coupled together and I feel so sure to get to that level when my state of mind is like I feel so sure the one thing that okay thanks I got my answer on that when I go <laughs> and do for one desire and do everything that There's I something that we want you to hear and that is we want you to focus not to make it happen we want you to focus because it's fun when you focus I, I see that like I said I visualize myself already I enjoy the moment and I feel good with myself living it before it has manifested in front of me the thing is that I see that change lifestyle that is going to bring even though material things are, don't mean much to me I see myself enjoying those things part of me I'm okay with it but part of me like I guess for where I came from it feels that I'm not there's a few we know it's complicated and you've got resistance about it I want this thing I do not want I want this thing I should not have I want this thing that others may misunderstand there's some contradicted energy but that's why we're saying to you your pure desire is in that vortex and if you won't overthink it if you won't try at the same time that you want it to evaluate the rightness of your having it or your worthiness of having it or how others will feel about it as you have it if you can clean up that vibration that's why when we say to you there isn't anything that you want for any reason other than you think you will feel good in the having of it do you think it's all right for you to feel good oh yes do you think that if you feel good that you deprive someone else of feeling good no is there only so much of a flow of good feeling do you ever be healthy for quite a while and then you say oh wait I've been feeling pretty healthy in my body for quite a long time and there are a lot of sick people out there so I've decided that for the month of April I will be sick <laughs> and I will allow more of the wellness to flow to more of the people who haven't been getting any wellness and so I say no. you have got to give in to the rightness of you being satisfied with your desires you've got to give in to sources desire for you to thrive in all ways that matter to you you see you've got to give up the struggle and so if something that you want has a little struggle in it don't use that as your subject to focus because it will slow everything slow down. down we don't know of any better way any more efficient way we don't know of a faster way for you to finally accept your worthiness that's where I have trouble with then for you to line up and let some good stuff in and line up and let some more good stuff in and line up and let some more good stuff in and feel the pleasure of source within you as you are thriving that's the way you will teach yourself the feeling of worthiness is by realizing that that's what your inner being wishes for you and when you hold yourself apart from the blessings that are raining down all around you that's resistance to something that is natural you see helpful very something more I was I guess raised with this religion and it was basically I guess unconsciously programming me now that I see things differently it's like I'm on this side and the people that I surround with they have this mentality which I'm okay with that they have these beliefs which I'm okay with that 
But now I see, like I said, we are to seek the truth and the truth will set us free. I feel that I am aware of a few more things. But the releasing of resistance will set you free. Yes. Okay. And the releasing of squabbling over what is true is the ultimate releasing of resistance. Even though I know deep in me, I, inside of me, I know that what makes me feel good about the beliefs that I have now and what I used to have, but me being around here, but, but, it makes me question. But see, the beliefs that you had were on the way to the beliefs that you have. You couldn't be who you are now if you've not moved through that in order to come to that clarity. Yeah, the thing that I have is that I kind of question myself, am I going in the right path? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because that sometimes I feel like it's just myself going over here and everyone is going that way. Let us show you how you can tell. So this subject sounds like the religion that I once learned and that many of my family and friends still are experiencing is somewhat different from what I have now come to believe. So there is a difference in the action or in the behaviors. There's a difference in the way they're doing life and the way I'm doing life. Which one's right and which one's wrong. And then we say, so there you are in that action world trying to figure out which pile is the right pile and which pile is the wrong pile but you're stepping back from that just a little bit and you're finding so much about those people that you love and in doing so you are in sync with the source within you who loves them so much so in your alignment and love the differences in your opinion is irrelevant that's true but in your opinion and action it seems so big that it keeps you from your love you see what we're getting at yes. so this is always true when you are focused with the fullness of who you are flowing through you you always feel wonderful so when you are appreciating something about one of them you are in such sync with source who is right there with you that the whole of you is having this experience and that is what you always desire is that the whole of you be there because when the whole of you is there when source energy is flowing through you as you hold anyone as your object of attention they always benefit and so do you in other words only good comes okay, from that okay, okay. but if you question yourself in some way so you are disconnected from source now it is that disconnection that makes you question the rightness there's not rightness or wrongness there's alignment or not there's allowing who you are to flow in this moment or there's pinching yourself off there's worthiness or lack of worthiness there's clarity or confusion there's being who you are or not being who you are but what religion or whatever that you're involved in has nothing to do with it you could be in any religion in the world and still be connected to source energy do you know that that which you want to call God is at the heart of every one of them no matter how much disagreement you have with them do you know that every person no matter how abhorrent their behavior is in any moment in time source is loving them and when you're looking at their action instead of the part of them that source is looking at then you're going to disconnect from source and that's why you feel bad not because they are abhorrent or doing wrong but because you've used them as your excuse to disconnect from source who never disconnects from source isn't that good to know? It is. It is.